Hi everyone, this is Professor Kidwai. <clears throat> okay, so our, our focus in this video lecture um, is going to be on, on two techniques that are sort of very similar to each other, which is why I'm putting them in, in one video, um, which is the, the technique of using cutaways, okay, and the technique of cross-cutting or parallel editing, okay? A cutaway is simply a shot um, an extraneous shot that is put into a, a scene or a sequence um, that that introduces variation, like visual variation into that scene or sequence, okay? Parallel editing or cross-cutting um, is a form of cutaway, but that cutaway has its own narrative. It's ha it has its own story. And so what you're doing is you're cutting away to a, a separate series or a separate strand um, of shots that have their own narrative, okay? So I'll, I'll go into the, the cross-cutting parallel editing in, in a minute and explain that a little bit further, um, but let's start with the cutaway, okay? So I'm, I'm going to play a scene from... Um, the film Bonnie and Clyde, which, by the way, if, if you haven't seen Bonnie and Clyde, um, this version of Bonnie and Clyde, right, I, I highly, highly recommend that you watch this film, okay? Um, this is a, a film made in the 60s by, by filmmaker Arthur Penn. I mean, it, it's just, it's fantastic. Um, the shots are fantastic. I mean, it, it's a really awesome movie. I, I uh, used to assign it in this class before the, the, the chair of the media studies program started um, requiring that we put other movies in, right? Like I've, I've mentioned this to you guys before that, you know, the Ozu film and the Antonioni film, um, the department has required, right? But I used to teach this film. I, I think this is a fantastic film. So anyway, I'm, I'm sorry to be giving away. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm spoiling all these fantastic movies in this series of video lectures. I'm sorry to be giving this, the, the, the big ending of Bonnie and Clyde away. But, you know, of course, <clears throat> if you're familiar with the story of Bonnie and Clyde, you'll know that, you know, at the end they die, right? So here we're going to watch this, 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 um, scene, and it'll, it will be very, very short. So we're going to watch a part of a scene, um, in which Bonnie and Clyde think that they're getting away. They think that everything is sort of okay. And, you know, we, we see Warren Beatty's, um, you know, character is, is eating this piece of fruit and, you know, um, Bonnie has, has her head on Clyde's shoulder. Like they, they think it's going to be this sort of happy moment. Um, but all along Bonnie has been having these premonitions of their death and, and she's sort of anxious and, and we, we see their death in this, in this part of the scene. Okay. And what I want you guys to pay attention to is what the filmmaker chooses to cut away to. What are the cutaway shots, okay? And and are they simply cutaways? Like, oh gosh, we need to we need to fill this scene with some shots that are something else, so there'll be variety and it'll be interesting. Or are those shots symbolic? Obviously, they are symbolic. Okay, we're gonna analyze it right now. Let's go. So everything about uh, Clyde is half in, half out, okay? Look at the sunglasses. One lens is there, one lens is not there, right? Look at the way the shirt is tucked. Half of it is out, half of it is in. Look at the fruit that he's eating. He's halfway through the fruit, okay? What's the significance of half, half, half? He's right on the threshold, in other words. Even the car, one door is open, one door is not right? He's right on the threshold in between life and death. See how brilliant it is? There's so many moments that are like this in this movie, you guys. It's so rich, right? He's right in between, okay? Let's keep going. Their friend Malcolm is, is you know, dis uh, uh, um, pulling them to the side. Look at that cutaway. 
the cutaway of the birds flying. Okay, I'll come back to it in a second. This cutaway of these birds flying away. What do we see immediately after? We see the betrayal. Okay, the friend Malcolm was supposed to distract them so they wouldn't notice the police driving up. Okay, what are the police going to do? Okay, we have this, I'm sorry, you guys, we had that intensely violent scene. I didn't want to say anything during the scene itself because um, one of the reasons the film is, is so famous is be, because of its very realistic portrayal of violence and of death. Um, so I wanted to sort of give space to that, that shot so we could see it, okay? But that cutaway of the birds, I mean, it, it's a way of, of distracting the audience, just like Bonnie and Clyde are distracted temporarily before the police arrive, right? But more than that, why birds flying away? It's a premonition, it's foreshadowing of the way that, let's say, the souls of Bonnie and Clyde are going to fly away in death, right? That moment is coming, the moment of their death is coming, that the soul will fly away, okay? So this fantastic use of the cutaway, sometimes we have to use the cutaway, like we can't just have shots of people faces that would get boring that would be like a talking head documentary right so sometimes we need to put other stuff in there but that other stuff those cutaways those other shots um, can still add to the story even if they are extraneous shots okay so now we're gonna see the cutaway expanded we're gonna look at an example of parallel editing and just to restate parallel editing is when you have two strands of narrative two different storylines edited together okay um this is of course the the fantastically famous film the godfather right francis ford coppola love francis ford coppola um, his politics might be problematic, but we love him as a filmmaker, okay? The Godfather is, you know, a fantastic movie. I'm sure all of you have seen it. This is the baptism scene, of course. This is a very, very famous part of, of the film. Um, just to, in case you haven't seen this, and again, forgive me, you know, I, I, I guess I didn't think about it, but all of these scenes that I'm showing you are literally spoilers. Um, this is, we're going to be, you know, watching in this scene. This is when Michael will, quote unquote, become the godfather, okay? His father was the godfather before, right? The father didn't want Michael to become, uh, uh, to follow in his footsteps, right? Michael is the one who goes to college. He goes to the army. He does all the right things, okay? The godfather in many ways is a, is a saga about immigrant families becoming American, right? And, and the original godfather, um, you know, Marlon Brando doesn't want his son to follow in his footsteps. He wants his son to have a chance at, you know, a good American life. Michael, of course, the son is pulled into the mafia. He's pulled into this world of organized crime. So here we're going to see how he becomes um, the godfather, how he quote unquote is baptized into the world of the mafia. The two narratives that we're, we're cross cutting back and forth between are, um, you know, this baptism scene in which uh, uh, Michael will literally become the godfather to a baby, um, to this scene in which all of these other figures in organized crime are, are um, murdered by uh, uh, the mafia as a way for Michael to solidify his power as the godfather father of the mafia. Okay, so let's watch this. Um, we're going to watch it more. I'm going to say less, but I'm just going to sort of point out maybe the, the, the back and forth and what it signifies. Hey, 
Oremus, precious nossos, pequestum domine nostrum. Amen. Micaela. Okay, we have this adorable little baby. Look how little that baby is, right? This adorable and sweet little baby. It's it's like this scene of perfect innocence. You know, that's that's a real baby, by the way. Like a lot of times in in movies, especially in TV shows now, they have these like weird robot babies that they use. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that. You know, but that's that's a real life baby. It's this very sweet shot. But what is it cut with? Well, we have a cutaway, right? That's what this would be. And look at what this cutaway is. <laughs> Okay, it's this series of shots of very serious men putting together very serious weapons, right? So the innocence of the baby contrasted with the utter lack of innocence of, of men of the world, of, of mafia men who, you know, unlike the baby, um, you know, who's at the beginning of their life, uh, uh, of its life, you know, the men of the mafia represent, you know, people whose lives are ending, right? They represent murder. That baby's so cute. <laughs> So we could say that in some ways that was like a graphic match, okay, of that close-up of the baby's face with the close-up of the shaving cream. You know, it's very strange and startling, like close up of the baby, close up of the gun, close up of the baby, close up of the gun. Again, the beginning of life, the end of life, the beginning of life, the end of life. Michael, you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe? Okay, so now there are going to be these series of questions from Michael, you know, does he believe in God? Does he renounce Satan? Okay, he's going to answer I do to each of these questions, but look at what the reality is. So this is the function of the parallel editing now. It's to introduce this, this chilling and spiritual irony that here he is in the church um, claiming that, I don't know, he believes in God and he renounces Satan, right? But the, the reality um, of his beliefs or the reality of his actions are revealed in the parallel edit of that actually he is, he's joining Satan. I mean, I'm sorry to be using, you know, th this kind of religious language here, but actually what we're going to see is it's the opposite. It's not that he's renouncing Satan, he's joining Satan by committing these baptismal murders, right? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. I do. do I do, I do. In the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church? I do. Okay, so now we have a kind of relationship between some of these shots as well, right? 
Um, I, I, we could kind of say it's it's almost like a rhythmic shot, except it's not exactly about the length of the shot, but the activity, okay? That these are rhythmic relations, that suddenly things are happening. The, the music, the, the sound of the music is rising, and we had all these shots of people moving, people moving. That in itself is another design principle, right? That the content of the shot, in this case, the movement of the shot, matches with the movement in the following shot. Mikael, ingredere in templum dei, curabias patam, in Christo in vita maternam, amen. Credo in Deo Pato, omnipotent, creatorum celi et tebe, el in Jesu Christo, il Filio Jesu, mi genitum dominum nostrum, mi concetto se stai Spirito Santo, natus ex Maria vis, passo su pior che fila, crucifixus morbus se se se. I think the baby suddenly is crying. It's like this chilling foreshadowing. Michael Francis, reaching, do you renounce Satan? Michael, do you renounce Satan? Bang, 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 right? Gunshots. Then Michael says, I do, followed by bang, 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 more gunshots, okay? Again, this kind of dramatic contrast, this dramatic irony. And all his works. Okay, so it's like a bloodbath, right? And 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 the priest asks Michael, "Will you be baptized?" And Michael says, "Yes." So just like the baby is being baptized into Christianity, into the eyes of the Lord, whatever it is, right? Michael is being baptized into this other world, this world of violence, the world of the mafia through blood, right? We have the contrast of the water and the blood, okay? I'll stop here because I know that this, this lecture is probably a little bit long now. Um, thanks so much, you guys. I'll, I'll see you in another lecture.